How long was that? 37 minutes. All right. What, did we want to cover anything else? I got one question yes. that somebody sent in saying, um, during the transition, how are you going to get people to do certain jobs that are needed to? Who's going to force them? Because they feel that it would take force to do certain things if they didn't want to. Well, you mean like coal mining? She wasn't you, specific. You have to get, get specific. All you do is vary the incentive. If during the transition we need coal and nobody wants to mine coal. But if you did mine coal, you'd work two hours a day, three days a week. You vary that, some people will volunteer. So if you want to fly over the earth and take pictures, and somebody has fear of particles or meteors in space, you say you only work two days a month. you got all the rest of the time to do whatever you want, sailing and fishing. You vary the incentives if you don't have money. What about the other jobs that they have to work at during the Like transition? what? I don't know, whatever it is. No, I'd have to know. Before the... Um, I'd have to know what it is. Like She was kind of saying that there are jobs that people don't really want to do, and even if they don't want to work, but... Well, let's say... I know them. Let's say during a, an epidemic or a tsunami, where you have to pick up rocks and take the people out, that's a dirty job. So you ask for volunteers... And there are always people that will work in a radioactive field, even though they'll die, because they know that 5,000 people will live if they do that. There are people like that. There are people that won't do that. There are people that will fall on a hand grenade to stop others from being killed. Do you know what I mean? They call them a hero. Even before the, um, before the automated machines are put in, yeah. what she was saying. There will be people that will volunteer. Yeah, that's what I... That's what, the way I... It always has worked that yeah. way. You know, not everybody went to war. The women didn't go to war in the old days because they couldn't carry weights and they couldn't hold a gun. So they make guns lighter today so women can manage to carry them. In the old days, women couldn't climb up a hill as fast as men. Testosterone secretion made their muscles more rigid and develop faster. So women, today they can drive war tanks and fly airplanes, but uh, women can also learn to stand loops and everything else by training. But there are certain things that a male may have, and if you cut the male testicles, remove them, hair disappears from their face. If you give women shots of male testosterone, hair begins to grow on their face. And there are changes in the musculature and shape of the body. Like, women walk a certain way, not because of, strictly because of conditioning, because of anatomy and spine muscles. They don't have, for example, men might walk like this, and women might walk like this. You know, because the muscles are different. The muscles, the little girls walk differently than little boys. But you can imitate that, but it isn't real. You know what I mean? Okay. Did you ever see a movie called Boys in the Band? It's about gays that walk that way. But it doesn't go into how they walk that way or why they walk that way. And women, like I said, move differently than men due to internal secretion. But if I give shots of male hormone to Roxanne, the musculature would change and she'd move a little differently than women. Do you understand that? That's genetic. Genetic is the color of the eyes, how bushy the eyebrows are, how much hair you've got, and the shape of the face. That's genetic. But bigotry, prejudice, racism, all learned. And you can't pass on to children things you've learned. Like, a mathematician doesn't pass on mathematical ability. But if the woman is a mathematician and the guy is a mathematician, they inherit neuronal arrangements that are similar. And a person that's very good at math may have a lousy sense of balance. You can breed chickens to have big, fat legs, which is desirable. If you can engineer chickens genetically to have six legs... We can use that. We can sell more legs. 
But if you breed a human as a mathematical genius, he may have a tendency toward tuberculosis. He may not have glands that work as well in other areas. He may not have a good sense of balance. That's why you can't breed humans to be intelligent only, have a good memory only. If you did that, you had to check other areas. You understand what I'm talking about? You can do it with chickens. You can do it with cows so they have more beef. But you're not working on the intellect of cows. But if you start breeding humans that can hear real well, they may have a poor sense of taste. Do you know what I'm talking about? That happens because the brain areas, like uh, the frontal lobes, are where feelings is. If you see a guy hit by a Mack truck, you turn your head the other way because you feel for that person. But if you do an, a vas- an, an, or, or remove the frontal lobe, the brain, the guy can see two cars crash and not feel sad. He says, I saw the crash, I saw the people burn me alive, but I slept well that night. People so have, the frontal lobes have a lot to do with feeling. Have, the back lobes, lobotomy it's called. No, but people who have car wrecks and they injure the, the frontal mass, lobes. They, they don't have, they don't they feel like they Yes. Yeah. Now the back of the brain is where the eyes focus information visual. If you hit, fall on the back of your head, you may lose your vision. Your eyes are perfect. But the nerves in the back end are smashed. The associative system is damaged. Do you think you know what I mean? That is physical damage. We deal with that to see how much a person can learn with half a brain. We will put them in a new institution and try to make the letters bigger. Whatever we have to do to get them to understand. And people injure themselves. There are people that bang their head against a concrete wall. So we will pad the wall. So it has foam rubber, thick, so the people don't hurt themselves. And they will try to work on them. But if they're born with half a brain, we will do things like I try to say in the past. If you have half a brain, I said if you take human skin and put it in a Petri dish and feed it, it'll cells will multiply. So you get enough skin. If a person's burned in an accident and two-thirds of their body is burned, they usually die. But if we can make skin and not ask for volunteers, grow skin and just patch them up, we'll be able to solve those problems. Don't they do that now? Yes, they are doing that now. So if we can grow brain tissue, if a person had a tumor removed, they can't speak anymore or act. If we can replace that brain tissue by growing brain tissue, and replace it surgically and teach the person how to move their arms again by a social system. I think that in the future, I have no doubt that man can accomplish almost anything. The proof is that he has. He's been able to fly, go under the water in submarines. He's able to walk underwater with a diving suit. He creates his own environment in that diving suit, oxygen. If he doesn't have a pump up there pumping oxygen, I can't do that. So it seems to me that man can make a shelter. He can go underwater, out into space. And there's no reason for me to suppose that this is what he can't do. There's no reason. Everything I've ever seen shows that he's learned more and more how to live in hostile environments that will not support life. He can travel 18,000 miles an hour on a spaceship. You know, which is unthinkable 40, 50 years ago. Do you know what I mean? So I suppose that man, if he doesn't kill each other, keeps learning new things, he'll be able to do anything he thinks of if he works at it and studies it more and more. First, he will make injections, give them to people and the guy will die. They'll stop using those injections. There's no other way to know. If a guy has syphilis, they injected all kinds of things. Well, they found that mercury will kill the syphilitic germs, but they also shorten your life. But you can live longer with mercury and syphilis than you can without it. So there are other alternatives. Either you die in a week 
where you live. With radiation treatment, they can take your cancer and bring it down in size. But five years later, it'll come back. But radiation gives you an extra five years. Depends on how early you catch the cancer. Do you, do you understand what I mean? If you come at it too late, where it metastasizes all through your body, radiation doesn't help very much. Although you might gain a year, but then you'll suffer. It'll come back again. So what we have to do is study how to diminish alien life that comes into our system. Cells that multiply fast suddenly. Why do they do that? What makes them do that? And if a guy has enough money to build all kinds of life support systems in blast tubes and he studies them and the money stops coming in, he has to stop. But I feel in a resource-based economy, whatever the hell do you need? Glass, we can make anything you want. And so you can study the thing. Today, they don't do everything in medicine. They do what they can afford. Hospitals appropriate so much money to research. Not everything they need. Do you understand that? That's why I'm against the system. Because if you printed a dollar bill for every cabbage that existed, you'd know how much cabbage there was. But the printing of money does not represent things. If you conscripted all the money in America today and brought it to a central area, there's not enough to build hospitals for everybody. But there's more than enough material. That's the difference. Material resources, it's resources that count. The nations are beginning to say, hey, we need the oil of that company. Without oil, our system can't operate. Today. In the future, sure. But will we get to the future? No. So we take oil. We take minerals from other countries that are not technically developed. We send technicians there and we dig machines that go deep into the ground. In California, a guy would buy land because the surveyor says there's probably oil under there. He'd buy that land and he'd pump the oil up. Now, the engineer said, you know, we can bend the pipe and take the other guy's oil off his land. Do you know that? They, they drill, can add drill at an angle and suck the oil out of the other guy's land. This is happening. So oil, if you dig at sea, you can turn your pipes in different directions and pump oil. Of course, there's a lint that becomes prohibitive. So people in California used to do that, used to design snake drills that the bit can turn and take the land from your oil. Oh, oh. And you're wondering why you're not getting as much oil. So you hire the geologist. He said somebody else is taking that oil. And that's, that became a lot of court battles. And it depends on how much money you had to fight back. Do you understand why they do that? Because the man wants oil. Instead of going to another country and taking the oil, you can do it by bending the pipes. In the old days, nobody knew about that, except engineers. And I said, look, tough shit if you don't know that. So, if you keep talking about decency, what the hell do you mean by it? Not bending pipes to other people's land? Not selling cigarettes or whiskey because people get become intoxicated? They can't drive as well? You don't have that kind of authority today. That's why you can't have decency and ethics. Do you understand that? So it's not a question of Fresco doesn't believe in decency and ethics. You can't have it in a predatory world. How much time have we got? Um, 52 minutes. You, You got that interview at 7, so...